quick. What is your favorite fetch quest simulator and why is it Lufia? Hello there, my name is Justin and this is Shinky JRPGs and welcome to my review of Lufia in the Fortress of Doom. Released in 1993, Lufia was the first game in a relatively short run series consisting of four games and a remake that fans of the series prefer to forget exists, due to how terrible it is. I played Lufia in the Fortress of Doom for the first time this week, and I need to give my thoughts on it. Before we get started, hit that like button and tell me, what's your experience with the Lufia series? Have you played any of the games in the series? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, let's get into the review, so strap yourselves in, grab a drink, and let's kick off today's review of Lufia and the Fortress of Doom into Overdrive. Do you ever get that urge for a simplistic RPG story that doesn't seem to have too many other meanings and is just given to you straight? A story where you can just sit and enjoy without feeling like you're missing underlying themes? Well, Lufia might be the game for you. It's nothing mind-blowing, and the story has been seen before, but there are a few plot twists that I myself did not see coming. So what exactly is Lufia about? Well, to bring it down to the most basic, non-spoilery terms, Lufia and the Fortress of Doom starts out with Maxim and his compadres on their way to fight four beings named Sinistrals. Almost like you're about to fight a final boss. It seems like it's a little strange for a game to begin this way, but this initial sequence sets up the entire tone of the game. After this initial sequence, the game fast forwards roughly 100 years. Well, it's actually 99 years, but close enough. Anyways, the game then cuts to another red-haired hero. Hmm, looks an awful lot like Maxim, doesn't he? Yeah, it's his ancestor. Hmm, an ancestor of someone who saved the world a century ago. I wonder where this story is going. Definitely not going to have the defeated Sinistrals come back and threaten the world. Spoiler warning, they do. And you're the only one that can save the world. That's the basic of the story of this game. Very cliche, and like I said, nothing mind-blowing, but it has that certain charm to it. Some people might think that this is boring, cliche, and repetitive, but I personally like the simplicity of it. It's really the little things that can bring enjoyment into a game. So, the story is all nice and simplistic. How does Lufia and the Fortress of Doom play? Well, this is a turn-based RPG. A very simplistic one at best. When I say simplistic, Lufia almost feels as if it was an NES RPG with a Super Nintendo coat of paint. While I was playing it, I got a lot of Dragon Quest feels, maybe mixed with a little bit of Final Fantasy in there, but more or less it felt like a very old game that just looked a little bit prettier. Anyways, let's start with the battle system. You have four characters, each designated to a specific type. You have your hero who excels in physical attacks and healing spells. You then have Lufia, a mysterious woman who showed up in your past. She excels in healing and support magic. She also has some attack spells. Next we have the knight Aguro. Aguro is solely a physical attacker, he gets no MP and no spells as a result. And lastly you have Jaren. Jaren is a half-elf, and as such she is a magic user. She cannot do much physical damage, instead wrecking havoc with her attack spells and support spells. The battle system is basic. You can attack, use spells, use an item, guard, or flee. That in itself is pretty self-explanatory. However, there are a few quality of life changes within the genre that I wish were in Lufia. First of all, there is no auto-retargeting. If you input your attacks for two characters, and the enemy dies before the last character gets their turn, any remaining attacks will continue to attack thin air, resulting in wasted attacks. This even goes with magic spells as well, so you could waste MP on thin air for no reason at all. To some, this may seem like a way to keep you from just mashing the A button, but as someone who really started with JRPGs in the PS1 era, this just seems frustrating. Another concern with the battle system is you do not individually target enemies. You attack groups of enemies. Normally, if you are fighting a large group of enemies, you will have your party all attack the same individual enemy in order to lessen the amount of enemies you are fighting at one time. However, 
With the way the game works, your allies will tend to attack different enemies with each attack, making large groups of enemies way harder to deal with than they need to be. This gets easier as you progress through the game and learn multi-target spells, but early in the game it just leads to deaths that can be avoided if you could just select specific enemies to attack. And the last concern I have with this game, there are no item and no spell descriptions, which leads to a lot of trial and error to figure out what the spell or item is used for. I'm sure that this was just a case of the descriptions being in the instruction manual, but as someone that played this in 2023, I did not have an instruction manual, so I was on my own to figure out what each spell and item did. My complaints about the battle system really just boil down to this game is old and will be treated as such. They aren't really a problem, but as someone who is used to newer RPGs past the NES era, this came as a bit of a shock to me. So the battle system is the bulk of the gameplay, but what about outside of battle? What's the gameplay loop like? Well, if you've ever played any RPG from the late 80s or early 90s, the gameplay loop is going to be incredibly familiar. You start by entering a town, checking out the weapon and armor shops, buying what you need from said shops, restocking your healing items, raiding various NPCs' houses for items, and then talking to each NPC wandering around town to figure out where to go next. Usually that will lead you to the next dungeon. You then traverse said dungeon, and then you will be directed to the next town. Each town seems to have a little mini quest tied into the storyline, which is never as simple as it seems. It could be gathering a mythical material for your ship, or finding a mysterious ingredient to feed the king because he's lost his appetite. Some of the quests seem really simplistic, but something else always comes up. It's honestly, they're fetch quests. The game is full of meaningless fetch quests. If you cut those out, you could probably cut the game time down by 10 hours or so. They get really boring. By the end of the game, it got incredibly exhausting. It eventually starts feeling like the game is nothing but fetch quest after fetch quest, almost like it's padding or busy work to extend the length of the game. Anywho, another thing about Lufia and many RPGs of its time is paying attention to dialogue. Now I know that's to be expected when you're playing RPGs, but there's always those times where you just lose focus and zone out and don't read a couple lines of dialogue. If you don't pay attention to the dialogue, and you miss where you're supposed to go next, you will have no way of knowing where to go. There is no journal. There are no quest markers. In fact, there is no map for the overworld whatsoever, which will lead to you just wandering around aimlessly trying to figure out where to go if you happen to miss what an NPC or story scene said. It was just a concept of older RPGs. At least nowadays, we have walkthroughs, so if you do happen to forget or miss what someone said, you have something to fall back on. I'm not a huge fan of walkthroughs, but hey, sometimes if you have no other option, you gotta use the resources available to you. As someone who is very keen of pixel art, it's often very difficult to say anything negative about retro JRPGs. Lufia as a whole is a decent game, but it looks incredibly bland. As the game only has a very limited set of tile sets, most of the dungeons look identical, every tower looks like every other tower, every castle looks like every other castle, and the same goes for every cave. There's not much of a variation. It's hard to tell each dungeon, or worse, every room in that dungeon from one another. It makes for a very bland experience. One positive I can say about the visuals is that Lufia doesn't rely on recolors to signify stronger versions of monsters. If you've played Dragon Quest, for example, you have things like the blue slime, the red slime, the spotted slime, just to show which one is stronger than the other. Lufia does not have that. Every new area in Lufia has entirely new monsters, making that area nice to adventure through. It's especially nice as Lufia has an absolutely insane encounter rate, which results in seeing these monsters over and over, and over, and, well, you get it. Music! Easily the best part of Lufia. I adored this game's soundtrack to no end. The world map and the airship music were some of my favorite themes, and the entire soundtrack gives whimsical adventure across the countryside vibes and was well suited. Though, I did notice a few things. While all the tracks are incredibly well done, remember when I said that all the dungeons and areas seem to feel the same? The music ties into that. Each dungeon has the exact same music, same goes for towns and homes. 
there just wasn't enough variation. I also noticed the music tends to suddenly stop and restart instead of properly loop. It's incredibly jarring when you notice it. That being said, of the music that Lufia does have, it's nicely done and it made the experience that much more enjoyable and memorable. For a JRPG, Lufia is relatively short. My playthrough took me about 20 hours. Unfortunately, Lufia does not have much that can deviate from the plot. There's very minimal amounts of side quests. The only thing that may extend the length of the game is the amount of grinding you do or do not do, which the game does not require very much grinding at all. Due to the minimal amount of side quests, the game is incredibly linear, which in turn leads to a nicely paced story. Most of the cutscenes in the game are within 5 minutes long, mostly only being used to direct you to the next point to progress in the game. While playing, you won't ever really feel like a plot point is overstaying its welcome. However, at the same time, nothing really lingers long enough to have an impact on you. Due to this, if you were to ask me anything outside of the first and last couple of hours of Lufia, I wouldn't be able to tell you much for details. It all felt so insignificant and unimportant. So more or less, you had 4 hours of Lufia that was incredibly interesting, and like 16 hours of busy work. Yes, it's as blah as it sounds. So should you play Lufia? Honestly, I feel like there are many better games to spend your time on. I would only suggest that you play Lufia and the Fortress of Doom if you want to dive more into the lore of Lufia and you're a huge fan of the series. Before I started this game, I was told to just skip the original Lufia and play Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals instead. Now I can see why. This game, while not bad, doesn't really excel at anything. In the end, it just felt like a Dragon Quest clone with a bit of Final Fantasy thrown in. What would I suggest to play instead? You could always try something like Dragon Quest V, arguably the best in the series, Chrono Trigger, which I don't have to explain anything about Chrono Trigger, or the whimsical Earthbound. All somewhat similar, but will offer you a much better experience. Have you played Lufia and the Fortress of Doom? If so, what were your thoughts on it? Did you enjoy it? Let's talk about Lufia in the comments below because I would love to hear your opinions on the game and chat about them. If you enjoy my reviews, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel where you will see me doing top 10s, you will see me doing reviews, you will see me doing the occasional news coverage. I do a little bit of everything here, all focused on JRPGs. Anyways, thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful day.